Thanks for watching THV 11 News at Noon. I'm Michael Aaron in for Amanda Yeager today. Let's start here with some developing news on a story we've been covering since February of 2019. Christy Schneider, adopted mother of Louis Schneider, is charged with endangering the welfare of a minor for allegedly giving fake information to doctors leading to unnecessary medication and procedures for the young boy. Ian Russell is live at the Saline County Courthouse. He has been uh, combing through the court documents. Ian, what have you learned? Hey, Michael, good afternoon to you. Well, we learned from these court documents that abuse happened somewhere between 2017 and 2019. Now, the documents actually do also say that Christian Schneider did so unlawfully and purposely. Now, Schneider is charged with endangering the welfare of a minor in the first degree, which is a Class D felony. Now, remember, we have covered the Schneiders multiple times in the past. We first shared the story of Louis when he was in hospice care in 2019, where he wanted letters from every single state. Later that year, the Saline County Sheriff's Office started an investigation of Christy Schneider. In December of 2019, Louis was removed from the home and placed in the care of DHS. They see Louis was a victim of Munchausen syndrome by proxy or being made sick on purpose by his caregivers. That is days after Louis was placed in the care of DHS. His health improved and he was able to actually get up from his wheelchair. That's according to previous court documents. Of course, a lot of developing news here in this story. I'll make sure to bring you the latest coming up on THV 11 News at 5 and 6. Michael reporting live in Saline County. I'm Ian Russell, THV 11 News. Well, I don't have to tell you, it's already hot out there. Look at this, Little Rock already feeling like 103 at this time, and that means heat exhaustion and heat stroke is a possibility. You have to take it easy, take frequent breaks, drink plenty of water, and keep yourself cool as possible because heat illness can sneak up on you pretty quick. Here are some other numbers around the region. We are seeing those heat indices now into the triple digits for everybody across the state. Feeling like 104 in Pine Bluff, feeling like 104 in Hot Springs, feels like 101 in Russellville, feels like 102 in Clinton. Heat advisory continues all the way through this evening, and it's going to be a repeat performance. Continue to see these heat advisories issued over the next several days, but look at that. Hot pink showing up in Fort Smith. That's an excessive heat warning because they could feel like over 110 later today. Here's what I'm watching on radar or temperatures out there right now, still into the low 90s. They will continue to climb the dew points. They're way out there into the mid to upper 70s. Radar loop already starting to show some pop up showers and storms. So some of you will see a cooling shower or storm out there through the rest of the day. Remember, if you hear thunder, head indoors because you are close enough to get struck by lightning. I do have some heat relief coming up in my extended forecast. All right, Nathan, thank you. Let's get to the latest on the coronavirus surge. We typically see lower numbers when it comes to COVID-19 in Arkansas on Mondays, but in yesterday's report, we were at a higher level than any other Monday in July. Let's take a look at the numbers. The latest report from the Arkansas Department of Health indicates that we have 621 new confirmed coronavirus cases. That is the most we've seen on any Monday again throughout the month of July. There are 14,627 active cases of the virus across the state at last check. That is down 650 from 48 hours ago. Hospitalizations have been worrying health officials in Arkansas for weeks now. ADH says we have 61 more people fighting COVID in hospitals this afternoon, bringing the total number to 980. 23 more Arkansans have died from the virus. The death toll is now at 6077. The CDC is expected to release new guidance this afternoon. A federal official tells CBS News the agency will recommend some vaccinated people still wear their masks indoors under certain conditions. COVID-19 cases are still on the rise nationwide, especially among those who have not been vaccinated. Florida is experiencing one of the biggest spikes with one in five of the nation's new COVID cases. CBS's Manuel Bajorquez reports from Jacksonville, Florida. Been why we have been together for uh, 31 years. 62-year-old Curtis Sanderlin recently lost his wife Joy to COVID-19. Now he's fighting for his life at this Jacksonville hospital. How are you feeling right right now as far as the, your ability to breathe and what this virus has done to you? It goes, the, the breathing, my breathing goes, it comes and goes. But the grief remains. Sanderlin, who struggled to get through the interview, is not vaccinated. But interestingly, neither are about half of the staff at the health system where he's being treated, says Chad Nielsen, director of infection prevention at the University of Florida Health Jacksonville. 
people frequently ask, well, why aren't more of your staff vaccinating? We say, well, they're still part of the general population. They consume the same news, they consume the same social media as others, and they're just as susceptible to some of the misinformation and things like that in the community. Yes, the unvaccinated are in COVID's crosshairs, but the impacts can reach beyond. It's been said this is a pandemic of the unvaccinated. But if all of your rooms are full and you can't get other patients in here for procedures, that affects everybody. Absolutely. Our hospital is filling with a lot of unvaccinated COVID patients. And what's going to happen is, is it's going to keep other patients from receiving care. As for Curtis Sanderland. Given what you've gone through, would you get the vaccine now? Yes, sir. You would get it now? No doubt about it. What's your message for people who haven't gotten it yet? Take it. Take it. Take it. Do the right thing. Last month, when the state's positivity rate for new cases dropped below 5%, the state of Florida stopped issuing daily reports of deaths and cases, instead going to weekly ones. But with that positivity rate now at 15%, some critics say those daily reports need to come back to help better track the spread. Manuel Bajorquez, CBS News, Jacksonville. Doctors at University of Florida Health System say the surge they're seeing may not even peak until the fall. As hospitals see more and more COVID patients, Governor Asa Hutchinson plans to meet with state Republican lawmakers today. That comes after calls from Democratic lawmakers and others to lift the state law banning mask mandates. During a special meeting last night, the Little Rock School Board voted on a resolution asking lawmakers to reconvene the legislature and to give Arkansas schools the power to enact mask mandates for students and teachers. Politics aside, UAMS Chancellor Dr. Cam Patterson continues to stress the importance of safety measures to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Now is not the time to back away from masking and social distancing. In fact, now is the time to double down on that. I know it's inconvenient, uh, but it's better than the alternative, which is either you're getting sick or you're passing the virus on to somebody else who gets sick. Senate President Jimmy Hickey of Arkansas tells the Associated Press he thinks there's openness among lawmakers to revisiting the mask issue for schools. But he also says there's uncertainty about how to do it and whether there are enough votes to make changes quickly. The mask mandate law is among a handful of new state laws that are set to go into effect tomorrow. Many of them are facing legal challenges. That includes the state's new stand your ground law. It loosens the restrictions on someone using deadly force. The law removes the duty to retreat before using deadly force in certain circumstances. The Arkansas Unborn Child Protection Act would ban all abortions in Arkansas, except if, it, except if it is done to save the life of the mother. But as of right now, it's been blocked by a federal judge. And several bills impacting transgender Arkansans also become laws this week. Acts 953 and 461 ban transgender girls and women from competing in girls' sports. Another law, the SAFE Act, which would make Arkansas the first state to ban gender confirmation treatments for minors, has also been blocked by a federal judge. There are even more bills that officially become law tomorrow. We have them listed for you on THV11.com. The House committee set up to investigate the January 6th insurrection has begun, but most Republicans refuse to participate in the committee. Skylar Henry has more from Capitol Hill. We'll be in order. Committee Chairman Benny Thompson opened up the first hearing of the Select Committee investigating the January 6th assault on the U.S. Capitol with a graphic video of the attack. <laughs> U.S. Capitol Police Officer Harry Dunn was breathing hard just watching the video. He's one of four officers injured in the attack who testified before the committee. And to be honest, physical therapy is painful and hard. I could, I could have lost my life that day, not once, but many times. Chairman Thompson said the committee will follow the facts in its attempt to find out what happened and prevent it from happening again. We know that efforts to subvert our democracy are ongoing, and a major part of the select committee's work will be to find ways to eliminate that threat. Chairman Thompson said there is no place for politics as his committee searches for the truth. But House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy discounts the investigation after House Speaker Nancy Pelosi rejected two of the five members he nominated. Speaker Pelosi will only pick on people onto the committee that will ask the questions she wants asked. That becomes a failed committee and a failed report, a sham that no one can believe. Two Republicans, Illinois Congressman Adam Kinzinger and Wyoming's Liz Cheney, agreed to sit on the committee. 
Cheney says they will investigate President Trump's role in the attack. We must know what happened here at the Capitol. We must also know what happened every minute of that day in the White House. Every phone call, every conversation, every meeting, leading up to, during, and after the attack. Several Republican House members have called on McCarthy to punish Cheney and Kinzinger for their decision. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Capitol Hill. The Department of Justice has ruled that former Trump officials can testify if the committee calls them as witnesses.